But he did come. He just didn't come the way they thought he would come because it says that he was going to come as a suffering servant and a king. They didn't think about the two different comings. They're waiting for their king to come. Jesus didn't come as a king. He came as a baby in a manger. He came low the first time, suffering, allowed all that to happen to him. But he's coming back again as a king. And I sang this song, and I feel like the Lord wants me to sing it for you too. Guys, this is one of the scariest songs I've ever sang, I've ever written in my life. But it is what will happen when he comes back the second time. Okay? Can you hear the sound? It's the day of the Lord. I just heard a trumpet followed by alarming words. The earth is shaking and all the people are running for their lives. It's a great and terrible day when the earth and sky rolls away. He's come to bring his sword on the land with his mighty arm and his outstretched hand. The Lord is not slow to keep his promises as one understands, but his patience will cease that terrible day as he moves across the land. There'll be fire in his eyes. Blood stains on his robe. Why do the nations conspire and all the people plot in vain? Don't they know that the anointed one is who they stand against? The day of the Lord will come in like a thief. Many will fall away. For they will be deceived, the sun will blacken, and the moon will turn to blood. So people, I beg you, repent of your ways, cast your idols aside, store his word in your heart so you may come to know his more gentler side. The Lord is not slow to keep his promises as one understands, but his patience will cease that terrible day when he moves across the land. There'll be fire in his eyes, blood stains on his robe. Why do the nations conspire? And all the people plot in vain. Don't they recognize the anointed one is who they stand against? And that's what they're going to see. And it ain't going to be the sweet Jesus that we know. So that's why we have to pray for the lost. And the way we pray for the lost is we get ourselves right. We drink Him in, let Him purify us so that we can put the blood on the doorpost and we can pull our city, our state, and our nation through the doorpost. It's all about us. When you get clean, the world's going to see the true Christ that they're supposed to see. And we're going to make them jealous. And it's a horrible thing that's going to happen to the people that don't get raptured. And I've told you before that God's going to be great. To, it's going to be great to see you. But God's going to look around you and see, did you bring anybody? And because of you, a thousand people are in hell because you didn't do what God, God asked you to do. And so that's why we have to pray for people. That's why we have to get ourselves right. I mean, we can't do anything. We just have to drink him in and say, Lord, I come to you. I'm not going to stop coming to you. I'm coming to your word. I want to know what your word means to me. I want to be like you. 
And so purge all this sin away from me. I want to be in union with you. Even though it means fire. Even though it means trials. I want all this junk out of me. So that I can bring my thousand people that, that are going to go to hell if I don't go to them. <laughs>